So I was thrown for a loop the other night with this girl that I'm seeing. It's been great, but she asked me if I'm over my ex. Of course I am. But she asked me why I'm so guarded with people and my kids knowing I'm dating. The following program is intended for a mature audience. Viewer discretion is advised. This I've got to see. It's worth watching, so stay tuned. Let's step through this. This is really important, okay? This is really, really important, this question. When you sent this to me, Kent, I was like, holy shit, this is gold here, because we can unfold this. So many of the women in our life are in their masculine. They have this huge shell, especially if she's pissed off at you or wants space or I love you, but not in love with you. She shelled herself off. That is, a sh you're no longer the masculine container in her life if she's saying those things. So if you're in that spot, the, the nagging, the pushing at you, the criticizing you, is her masculine shell poking you. Okay, now this woman in, at, in three weeks in, you know, it's probably not as nasty as 15 years in a relationship and she, you know what I mean? But that's what she just did. She, so she took something that she's insecure about or she wants to challenge you. And with Ian, Ian's not on here. If Ian was on here, he and I talked about this extensively and I named it bookends. These are called conversational bookends. And this is advanced kind of like ninja masculine conversation shit that she's doing. So I called it bookends because she said she framed, she put you in her frame. Why are you so guarded? You know, why are you so guarded? Boom, that's a bookend. So she's making an assertion about you that you didn't say. And the frozen defensiveness is that's what it feels like when the other person bookends you. Because now the only place you can go is this way in their frame, okay? So what you, what you got to do, and I'll ask you what you did do, and it sounds like you handled it well, but my, my uh, quick in the time that we have here advice that Ian and I talked about this for months. So next time he comes on, remind me Kent, to talk to Ian about bookends, okay, guys? Remind me about bookends, which is you have to ignore the bookend. And, and just remember, I can put books wherever I want. So if she puts the bookend in the middle of the shelf, right? The bookshelf, that doesn't mean you have to put books on that side of the bookend. You can still put books wherever you want, meaning you're back into your frame, okay? The problem here is she puts you in a defensive on your back foot defensive position, which is not gonna be attractive long-term. So what a woman's doing is frog farming you. Okay, you guys have heard of frog farming from Allison Armstrong, right? So, okay, tell us about frog farming. What's frog farming? Yeah, it's the, um, it's like the exact opposite of a woman of the feminine em embodying and being in like, um, really bringing to relationship a sense of like honoring you and respect. It's a, you know, we talk about the fable of the princess kisses the frog um, in and relationships she can start. And it's like, you're the prince. And then it's kind of digging into um, making it all like making you the frog, making all the warts there. Um, and, and then it becomes almost like a, a, the bookends that it's like, no matter where you move, you can't get out of unless like the relationship ends. And so Alison Armstrong says like, that used to be where she came from um, as a woman. And that's why she started like studying masculinity and men to, and you know, how women can respond. Um, so that was her whole purpose and drive. Yeah. So it's, it's not malicious, but what she's doing is preemptively this woman, Kent, I believe, and I'd love for Cynthia to ever, I believe she's preemptively defending herself through a sh like her shell is pushing you and she bookended you in the conversation and you know it's this assertion so here's the here's the double bind that you're in as a man if you defend yourself directly now you're explaining and defending okay which is brain to brain masculine to masculine you're intellectually defending yourself is depolarizing you with that woman now, three weeks in, there's enough, you know, chemicals and honeymoon phase and dopamine and, you know, adrenaline and shit to kind of get over that. But huge fucking warning sign for this woman's conversational, like what she's doing. OK, so the way you have to deal with and this is just a challenge, by the way, I, I believe that we attract people that are 
and this is family systems theory as well, research done for since the 70s. We attract people that are within a certain range of our own enlightenment, our own skill set. So Kent, you attracted this woman because of your new level of skills. And now you're being challenged in that new level of skills with the woman who's putting the conversation into her frame with her masculine and book ending you. And so how do you do, how do you deal with that is what I'm talking about, right? So you can put those books anywhere you want in the shelf. You can answer that. You can do sexy, funny, like sexy, funny. But I mean, that's probably a great way to go here. Like guarded, if you mean guarded, like, a, you know, you can make a sex joke out of it. So I'm curious, Kent, right? Tell us how you handled it. So then the next day she said, thank you for being clear. Did you kind of explain yourself or which way did you go with it? So if there's anything I could describe myself as is the last six or eight months of my life is not talking too much. It's like, shut the fuck up. Like <laughs> say what I had to say and then move on. Like I'm I, with my friends, with my family, with the women I'm dating, I, I don't over explain. And, and so how I handled that was um, right now I'm choosing to differentiate my fatherhood life with my dating life. Like I, I just don't want my kids involved in my, relationships at this point and that's pretty much all I said um and if there was anything that maybe triggered the conversation uh, and not to backtrack but it, this just came to my mind was um the conversations about making plans you know next week or next month or whatever and I said look I'm I'm looking for neck for connections one day at a time I said my my days as a dad are limited I said I'm going to spend my days with my kids and when I'm with my kids I'm with my kids I'm like, when I'm with you, I'm with you. And I don't know if that triggered this type of shit test, but I think that might've had something to do with it. And then, cause she kind of went into this, well, if I want to do something next month, I can't plan it. And I said, no, you can plan it. Absolutely. And we can just, you know, discuss, but right now it's, for me, it's one day at a time as far as relationship status. So um, not over explaining. Definitely. I, I, I know I did that well. And just creating those boundaries of look, I've got me as a father and I've got, me in my dating world. I'm doing a great job of, of differentiating those two worlds. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. So let me add, let me add on top of that, right? That, that sounded great, Kent, right? So for value, let me take a step forward. Um, so you have a woman who will challenge you, that woman. So you have to be, you're hundred percent clear that that's her personality. Like I would bet a million dollars that's going to continue. Okay. That's not a bad thing, but that's like, you're in a karate class and you know, she's throwing punches and kicks at you. And she wants you to be able to, with humor, with charm, with, you know, empathy, block the kicks and then like make a sexy, funny joke or block the punch and then bring her in for a kiss. You know what I mean? Like, this is the kind of stuff that this woman is going to need. For, uh, this is who she is. Now there's reasons for this, right? She, She's already, by the way, defensive about your ex, probably because she has issues. This is projection. This is humanity. All of us project unless we're very conscious and aware of our body and our emotions and our thoughts. Like that's why we do this work too. So she's projecting here. There's obviously pain there for her, just so you know, right? So if I were you, the next, if you continue to date her, which it sounds like you are, and you guys get to know each other a little bit more, the next time you're in a safe place, not like a restaurant, but probably coffee or someplace, there's no rush, okay, and there's no pressure. Uh, if she brings anything up like this again, if I'm you, I'd say, there feels, it feels like there's more underneath this for you. It feels like there might be pain underneath this for you. Share more about that with me. Okay. Now this can go one of two ways. She can open up to you and share, or she can get more defensive. Okay. If she gets more defensive, that's a very, very, very bad sign. Just so you know. Okay. If she's like, Oh, good, good, good. And masculinizes back or shells back. That's to, when, when I talk about these things, guys, and you try something, it can either go well, or, you know, she can get more defensive and her getting more defensive, especially this early, means that there is a lot of pain there. And she doesn't either trust you enough yet or there is a lot of pain. If, so if she like gets defensive and closes down, that's really, really bad. If she makes a joke back and kind of masculine pushes you again, she's throwing more kicks and punches and she wants you to fucking flip her on the ground. And you know what I mean? Like metaphorically, guys, metaphorically, okay? <laughs> 
So just so you know, she might play more. She might open feminine open. She might close down and shut off more. That, that's going to be a really, really big indicator of where she is in her own personal work and her own ability to trust you and open to you. And that doesn't mean that you just pull the ripcord then, but you know what I'm saying? You have two or three of those kind of ch ch chatting conversations over the next month or two. And if those aren't going well, man, that's a really, really, that's a really bad sign in my opinion. Cynthia, what would you say about what I just said there about, you know, open it. She wants to, she wants you to be able to dodge the punches and then have fun with that. And she wants you to open her, but yet if she is not allowing you to lead there, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, even the the punch, the like bookended your guarded statement does show the that there's something, there is a pain there. There is something that she's looking to express. And that's, that is very feminine, that is just coming out in a really poor way. And so the invitation to, I mean, that is such a gift to be like, you know, gosh, it seems like there's a lot of pain there. And to invite her out, if she doesn't, she can't see that as a gift or feel it as a gift um, or want to embrace that. Um, that question itself is everything that like that sacred masculine offers. And if if she doesn't want to be in the like divine or the feminine with you like that, um, that makes me very sad for her for a missed opportunity. Um, and it it would feel like that could get harder and harder. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really nice way to say it. That's going to get a million times worse, is what she's saying. Okay, if you can't if you can't do judo with this chick three weeks in. That's, you know what I mean? Like when honeymoon phase and everything else. Yeah. To watch the rest of this episode for free and other episodes, go to greatmenmovemountains.com slash VIP. Punch in your info and watch the rest for free. Get more affection, love, and sex in your marriage. Get less paralyzing fear and rejection. Never miss an episode. Watch anytime, anywhere, 3 a.m. on the toilet. Get full episodes. GreatMenMoveMountains.com forward slash VIP. The C-Note Show.